Ben Brand. Oh, one of the one of the many Bens in Bitcoin. One what, what a surprise. They got the microphone for you there. Sorry, you gotta hold on to it like you're uh testing, like you're at a, testing. Yeah, I can hear you. So Ben, um, why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself? I'm I'm just meeting you now for uh the first time, I believe. Am I right? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, yeah. so we like briefly met yeah, this morning, yeah, yeah. but yeah, we didn't I think that was just about names. Yeah, um, and you were uh yeah, you were listening to a space earlier, right? Yeah, yeah they had the, uh, I didn't want to take you out of the feng shui. Yeah, no, they had the uh, LDK roadmap this morning, so I, I've been trying to um, kind of tune into that, you know, to what's going on over there, just because um, I don't know. I guess I like the project, and uh, I, I, I guess that's what I've been spending my recent free time with. So, um, gotcha. yeah, I figured I'd try and listen to the people that actually know what they're talking about, as opposed to just like reading up on like the blogs and whatever online resources I can find. Gotcha. Gotcha. Well, um, yeah, man, I just kind of met you today, so I don't, I don't know too much about you yet. So why don't you tell mm -hmm. me what you do in, uh, in the Bitcoin land and, uh, what brought you here to, are you full time in Austin or are you just here visiting? Uh, visiting, uh, month to month. So I've uh, been here since about mid January. Okay. Um, I was in Chicago for a while. Uh, I was working at Expedia, um, Knew I kind of wanted to get into the uh, like the cryptocurrency world um, at the time, and then that kind of dialed into the Bitcoin ecosystem specifically. Um, so left my job at Expedia, and then I was pretty much just kind of like working out of my room in Chicago for a while, um, just trying to teach myself. Uh, you know, kind of at first the crypto landscape. And then that kind of narrowed into Bitcoin as a whole, which kind of then narrowed further into lightning specifically. Um, and then, yeah, when my lease expired, then I was like, all right, I got nothing holding me to Chicago. So I figured I'd kind of do like the digital nomad type of thing. Gotcha. Um, so started off kind of road tripping, uh, and now I've been kind of doing month to month in different places. So I was in, uh, Nashville from, was that about October to December and now been uh, here in Austin from about January to March. Awesome stuff. All right. So since you were in Chicago, I got to ask, man, Cubs, <laughs> Cubs or Sox? Cubs. All but, right. Good. But, good. but good. I, that's I, the right I, answer. Not, not a passionate. Uh, that's not a passionate answer. I've been I've been to both. <laughs> I gotcha. Yeah. I, I don't even know what the, the Sox Park is called anymore. But when I was uh, growing up, it was the right. cell. Uh, rate, so. rate something. Oh, guaranteed, uh, guaranteed rate. rate. Guaranteed yeah, yeah, rate. Yeah. That's what it is. Yeah, it doesn't have anything on Wrigley. So I'm, no, I'm a, yeah, my family's from Chicago. So diehard Cubs fan and Bears fan and, you know, all that kind of stuff. So, I mean, shout nice. out to the Bears are making great moves right now in the NFL for those who aren't following mm -hmm. um, leagues on notice. But uh, yeah, man. So, all right. So you've been in Nashville. You were in Nashville for a few months and now you're in Austin. I want to hear about that. Let's talk about the differences between the two, like what you liked, what you didn't like in each city. Um, yeah, feel free to just take a dive into that. Ooh, that's that's tough. Um, don't I'll, be I'll afraid try to, to avoid any. Yeah, I'll don't try be to afraid avoid to rip any on dislikes. Nashville, so, right? <laughs> no, they, they are I'm different. Kidding. They both have um, uh, definitely pros and cons to them. Like the the guys at Bitcoin Park, they're great. Um, uh, Rod and Matt, and you know, there it, it's a great community there, and they like the space is just incredible and i don't know they host great events there um and i think it seems like they're starting to you know kind of develop a reputation for the events that they host like the the mining summit right repping the the volunteer gear now uh but the mining summit was really cool uh didn't make it to the free and open source uh meetup uh week but that was really cool uh or heard good things about it at least um but yeah i i guess uh, part of what attracted to me attracted me to Austin, um, was kind of the, the number of developers are, that are here. There's a lot of, a lot of talent and, you know, as a software developer myself, I kind of want to just like put myself amongst all that and, you know, try and learn from s some of the people in the area. Um, but yeah, um, Overall, I mean, it's kind of hard to, you know, to make like an apples to apples comparison, you know, they're, 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 they're different, they're, you know, they're kind of unique in their own ways and it kind of depends what you're looking for. Um, so how would you, you described Austin as a little bit more dev heavy. How would you describe the Nashville, I guess, Bitcoin scene? Mm, that's a good question. Uh, it, 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 so to be fair, yeah, the, the Nashville developer community, it does seem it is growing. So when I was there, they had their first bit devs meet up. Uh, and then it seems like, you know, kind of the number of developers and the interest from the developers is growing in that area. 
Um, but you know, it, it, trying to summarize it, that's a, that's a good question. It's like, they're very diverse. They, they have, uh, like when I was there, they had the, the mining summit, but I wouldn't necessarily classify them as a mining town. Yeah. Um, I know they have like a lightning summit coming up this summer, but once again, like I wouldn't co- consider them like lightning focus, you know, it's very, um, uh, yeah, it seems like Bitcoin Park is kind of the heart of it. And yeah. Bitcoin Park is just kind of this like, it, it, it's this space that's, you know, you can kind of put into it what you will. It's yeah, not, no, I get what you're saying. It's just like, you know, from, yeah, obviously I'm in Tampa. So I'm, I, but I grew up here in Austin and, you know, I've obviously been here for just, just a couple of days, but I've kind of been back and forth. I've, I haven't been out to Bitcoin Park yet, but I've been to uh, one it, of the man. Nashville Bitcoin meetups. Um but just the perception from like an outsider, I guess, looking in, it seems like, you know, Austin's very dev heavy, uh, but, you know, they, they have a lot of mining and stuff like that going on because, you know, a lot of these public companies have mining facilities in Texas, maybe not in Austin, maybe closer to Houston. Um, and Houston's always been, I mean, like I said, I grew up, I grew up in Austin. So Houston's always been like revolved around oil and gas. So energy specific, Um, So it seems like that's just kind of a natural fit for mining. And it seems like Nashville is more on the media side of things where, you know, you have Bitcoin magazine kind of headquartered up there and um, they got like the nice podcast studios. Yeah. 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 I'd I'd agree with that. Yeah. So, I mean, it's not like it's not a negative that they're, you know, like you said, they're all they're all kind of special in their own right. And, you know, what I think is interesting, not only of just like Nashville and Austin, but in like even like sub communities, um, you know, I I was talking about this on my podcast at one point with uh, Benny Builder, uh, Benny Hoddle from uh, from Tampa. Uh, Cause that's where I'm from. And he was kind of just describing the scene there where we have like, you know, I'm a podcaster. We have a couple other people who are podcasters and we have some devs, we have some people that are building out home miners. So I think like if people really look, you know, around, maybe they, they think like, you know, Austin's more dev heavy or one, you know, Nashville's more media heavy or whatever. If you look around, you're going to kind of find a little bit of everything in every city. Would you kind of agree with that, I guess? Yeah, and I and I think especially as the overall community grows, then like naturally those different components of the um uh kind of grow as well. I, I I you know, I think it's still even as a community as a whole grows, it seems to, you know, for the most part, there still seems to be a bit of a theme, just mm-hmm. like you're talking about like Houston versus Austin, maybe like a developer versus a uh, mining kind of focus res- or not respectively, but <laughs> yeah, yeah, the opposite between the two. Um, but, uh, but yeah, as you grow it, like, I, I guess kind of what I'm alluding to in my mind here is like, uh, while I was in Nashville, just kind of seeing that developer community grow just the time I was there. And that was mostly just kind of piggybacking it, piggybacking off the fact that there was, um, a community, a space there in the first place for those developers to actually get together, um, and, you know, just kind of work together. Yeah, for sure. So, all right. So we, we kind of went over a little bit of background, you know, obviously big Cubs fan and, uh, yeah. surrounded all things Cubs in Chicago, but, uh, on a serious note, like you, you said, you kind of recently gotten into, to lightning. Um, so what are you, what are you trying to, are you building a project kind of freelancing? Like, what are you kind of doing in this space? Did you find a, you know, maybe a job at a Bitcoin company? Yeah. Let, let's dive into that. Yeah. So, uh, I guess you could say I'm kind of doing my own, like, uh, independent work right now. Uh, so when I left, ex- when I first was digging into lightning, um, it seemed a little overwhelming, like diving straight into the protocol itself. Mm-hmm. Uh, so my goal, like my background is in, um, a- is as an application developer. So mostly building web applications, but a little bit kind of in data engineering, data applications. Uh, so the first thing that I kind of want to do is just get familiar with lightning at a high level. I kind of saw lightning as this, you know, it's a new payment system that has its like a unique set of um, properties to it. So it has its own like competitive advantages that come with that. Mm -hmm. Uh, So my goal was to kind of like figure out, okay, what are those competitive advantages? And then kind of just start, um, you know, building a web application that, um, 
you know, it, mainly for my own kind of personal interest of like, okay, actually learning how to do, how to build a web application, how to integrate it into Lightning. Um, and now, yes, yeah, so I, I, I started that probably about a year and a half ago, and that was very kind of in, intermittent to start and then been a little bit more focused on it in the last, say, six months or so, um, with the exception of the last two weeks, which I've kind of like completely put it to the side, but that's been what I've been up to for the for the majority of the time. So the project is called uh, wordform.space um, or wordform. It's you can the domain name is wordform.space. Mm-hmm. So if you wanted to, you could check it out there. Um, but yeah, it's basically just a content platform that you can, if you're a writer or any sort of content producer, you can upload some content, attach a price to it. And then as the reader, I would go in, get presented with an invoice and get access to the content. Oh, awesome. Um, yeah. So, yeah. So there's a lot, like you could check it out. It, you know, works to a very basic, you know, like minimalist, uh, uh, extent right now. I've put like almost like zero effort into the actual like styling. It's, you know, really just kind of the functionality that's yeah. there. Um, but yeah, I think that to me, uh, it, it kind of captures one of like the, like, like some of those competitive use case, competitive advantages of lightning and the fact that you can, you have this global monetary network. So if you're a writer, you can, you know, basically create a, um, upload some content, put it behind a paywall and, you know, have your audience can be anybody in the world and they can send you, you know, pennies essentially for, for that content. And, you know, if you're to kind of like abstract or generalize the idea of just like online content, it's really just kind of about data in general. Mm -hmm. The fact that, you know, data has value, you know, people talk about like data is the new oil or, you know, anything like that. Yeah. Um, And it's like, yeah, so data has value. And then you have this payments network that allows you to pay, you know, small bit, you know, small, small amounts of money for, for this data. So then it kind of has this, um, uh, yeah, I, I think it just kind of, I think in the long term, lightning will kind of enable, uh, you know, marketplaces for data in general and online content. And I just kind of, uh, figured this was a good starting point for it. Yeah, that's awesome. So did you kind of, I guess you know, did you come up with this idea based on, or or like, I guess after kind of finding Bitcoin and kind of going into that, or maybe like, I guess the crypto space, because it is interesting because the way you're describing it, or I mean, the way that, you know, content creators and and other things like that, you know, I mean, I guess I'm in that category, uh, you know, kind of monetize now it's, either based on yeah you know, like a paywall kind of like you're describing or you know the the end person is essentially the the product i guess if that makes sense where it's like you're showing them ads or you're presenting a sponsor or something like that um so did you kind of uh, i guess come up with that because it seems like there's you know definitely a movement for the value for value when it comes to the bitcoin space um, so yeah, you kind of chuckled there. So what do you think about all that? And, uh, do you, uh, you know, think that, I guess, uh, did you, did you f- come up with this like post finding Bitcoin and kind of diving into it that way? Or was it something that you've seen, you've seen a problem, uh, previously, and then that's, you see like how Bitcoin can solve it. Um, yeah, I guess there's kind of a lot to, yeah, uh, lot to a lot to, I, lot to unpack. I, I rambled to go for that. No, 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 no. It was a good question. I, I'm kind of trying to formulate how to approach that in the first place. Um, so getting started, I mean, it really was just kind of, okay, I want to build a web application and like, what's the simplest way of doing that? Um, and you know, I, I don't think it's really like an original concept in the sense that like, you know, there are tutorials that kind of describe what I was, you know, like that, that I was really kind of jumping off of, uh, just to get started. But then I guess kind of the more I was playing around with this project, the more I kind of saw its value and the more I started thinking about kind of it's, you know, it's place in the world, what value does it add? Um, and I was kind of laughing because I, I guess I have some personal beef with the, uh, you know, kind of monopolizing the term value for value with this model of what I, what I think of as kind of like the tipping model, um, Mm -hmm. where it's like, I get free access to content and then depending on like the value I think I got, I can give, you know, I can give you like a tip. I can give you like, Oh, Mm -hmm. uh, like a thank you, you know, here's, here's some money type of thing. Um, 
versus, you know, I still think of it as value for value if there's a paywall. Yeah. And let's say it's just like me as I, I consider myself as like, a let's say I'm the writer. I still think of myself as a service provider. Like I took some, some content, some knowledge, some information. I, you know, kind of compiled that or compressed that into something that is digestible to, you know, my target audience. I, so I put time and energy into this content and now I'm just saying, okay, if you want access to that content, you just kind of have to pay the fee up front. And I uh -huh. think, you know, people are just very turned off by having to like pay for anything, which, you know, in the Bitcoin community, I find kind of ironic because it's like, okay, we have this new like magic internet money. And now it's like, okay, people like want everything for free, which I kind of find, you know, I guess a bit ironic, but, um, well, I mean, I think that's just kind of like the culture right now. I mean, like not yeah, only, yeah. Not, not, not just, I think like Bitcoiners are a little bit a different breed where they're like yeah, more, more willing to, to like, you know, pay you for what they find valuable or whatever or tip or whatever. But I think, you know, we were, I was kind of talking about this with some people out there. It's like, you know, people in America want to work less and get paid more. And it's just like, I mean, they, they want like, they want that instant gratification. They want things like for free or for cheap. And then, you know, if you put something behind a paywall or something, you know, I, I see a lot of these big, like even like financial Twitter accounts not even outside of Bitcoin, they have like some sub stack that they spend all this time. And then, you know, people just rip them apart for putting it behind a paywall. And it's like, well, you know, you got to make a living at some point in time. But, right? And yeah. But I guess in my mind, this is what kind of like lightning changes though, where like, if you go on Substack, I, I think the, one of the big issues with, um, with pretty much any paywall you, that you see online today is the amount of friction behind it. And you know, it's the very high value content um, like the financial Twitter stuff, um, yeah. where it's like, they'll put it behind, you know, high paywalls versus, you know, if you have lightning, let's say, uh, it's a hundred sats to read, you know, an article from your favorite, like macro author, you know, yeah. Lynn Alden's charging a hundred sats for something, you know, you, you almost don't even have to think twice about yeah, whether that's worth kind, the value. Yeah. But then at the same time, you know, that writer, the Lynn Alden's of the world, they can monetize directly from their audience very easily. Yeah. Um, and, th and I, th I think people are starting to see like the power of, you know, uh, tools like Albi, where if you have a wallet in your browser, um, it, now, you, you know, the, the user experience, the friction of actually completing that paywall is, you know, almost zero, mm -hmm. you know, depending on kind of what your setup it is setup is, I think Albi, you, you, you could make it zero. You could have it an automatic payment under a certain amount. Yeah. And so it's like, okay, you might not even you, you know, you have this low friction way of sending a hundred sats, you know, so something you find valuable, you can make that payment. And, you know, to me, that's kind of like a win-win. No, I agree a hundred percent. And yeah, that makes sense. And, you know, like, like as you're describing it too, it's like, all right, a hundred sats, like at the current price, that's like, you know, that's like nearly free, right? It's like one cent yeah, or whatever yeah. it is. Like it's, it's pretty cheap, like relative to all things, but you know, as as that goes along and like because it's one cent people wouldn't even like you said think twice about it mm. and it's like all right well 100 sats essentially free obviously it's not you know it's it's one cent 100 sats whatever it is like us dollar price but you know people would be more willing to do to do that like hey like or or it could even be one of those things where you have like you know, like you said like an albi or something like where your wallet's already connected you have i don't know 100,000 sats in it or something and you just go through these articles, you don't even notice like half the time. And then, you know, a year passes by and you have like 99,000 sats opposed to a hundred thousand. But, mm. you know, you were just tip like using that hundred sats each time to kind of open it in. And then in the end, you know, somebody like a, a Lynn Alden or, you know, somebody else, or even, you know, myself or whatever, I'm probably not going to be making as much as Lynn Alden, maybe, <laughs> but that, you know, that those yeah, views like add up, you know, I mean, you know, you get 2000 views times a hundred, that's, you know, 20,000 sats or something. So, I mean, you know, it, it could be something that's definitely valuable. And I think, you know, I, I think the, the, where we're at in like, I guess in the content world, people are getting kind of annoyed at these catchy headlines, these grabby things, people where, you know, I don't know, see expert this or biggest mm -hmm. scam this, you know, the, the, the headline grabs that people are essentially given. And, you know, it's almost like a joke now where everybody knows like, Hey, I, I can 
you know, I'll open or read this article because of the catchy headline, but that, then you'll get to the article and you'll be pissed because you're like, why the hell did I waste all my time reading that? And it was just because of this stupid headline. So I think like, you know, it, it's going to be interesting to see where content creation goes, especially with, you know, the addition of things like Noster and some of these other protocols that are come out where, you know, maybe it's like, you know, the algorithm is not going to push or there's not going to be maybe an algorithm behind things that's going to push all this content in your face. So yeah, man, I, I think like that, the aspects that you're describing and not only that, but like the, the avenue for content creation in the future is, it's, it's kind of up in the air. Like, I don't think that we're seeing like really anything that's, you know, concrete just yet. I think it were the, that there's, you know, a lot, a long way to go when it comes to all this stuff. Yeah, no, I definitely agree with that. Um, it, I, I think lightning is a, is a game changer and it's, you know, very dynamic landscape. And, you know, it, and just as you're saying now, Noster, it adds yet another kind of variable to the mix where, uh, you know, you have some people that are super hyped on it. You have some people that are super bearish on it and, you know, I kind of played around with it myself and, uh, you know, I kind of, for me, the, the, uh, the integration that I did with, um, you know, f- for the project that I'm on is just kind of treating it as like almost like a, uh, external facing like communication tool. So it just can like broadcast anytime somebody posts to the platform, but not actually mixing it in with the actual application logic. And I could kind of see that being a model. I'm not saying that's like the right answer or anything, but I could also see that just being like a general, um, like just another way of kind of thinking about Nostra is like you kind of have, maybe you have a platform and then you're just, you want to have just an external communication system mm. that connects users and like their profiles and stuff. Yeah. That's um, interesting. Yeah, man. I, I, I don't know if Nostra is like, I mean, I definitely don't think it's a finished product yet. Yeah. I mean, you, I use a Domus app on my iPhone, but it's, uh, it's come a long way. Uh, I think, you know, in the, the three months maybe I've been on it. So, I mean, I, I've seen a lot of improvements already when it comes to that. So, mm-hmm. and I think that, you know, like I said, I think it's like an ever-changing landscape. It's just, you know, who wants to kind of get in now and kind of deal with some of those bumps in the road opposed to just going on Twitter. But even, if, you know, even if you're on Twitter right now, there's still like, you know, some bugs. Elon laid off like, you know, half the staff and it was working perfectly fine for a little bit, but it seems like there's, it's a little bit more buggy now uh, to say the least. So, I don't know. It's all kind of uh, an interesting, uh, interesting little thing that we got going on here um, in the next next couple of years, especially like when it comes to content creation. But um, I'm getting a little tired of hearing my own voice and kind of talking a little bit. So um, I'm going to wrap it up here, uh, here at day two of Pleb Lab. But why don't you tell people where they can find you and find out like a little bit more about what you're working on and uh, yeah, maybe help support. Ooh, that's, uh, that's tough. Cause I don't, uh, I'm not too big into social media or, you know, I don't have too much of an online presence. Um, I do have a Twitter, so I suppose that'd probably be the, the easiest spot that I don't have too much of a following. Uh, the Twitter handle, I believe I'm going to get this right, but, um, B R H I N D 28. B R H I N D 28. Oh, there we go. Hey, yep. Follow me. There we go. I'll, I'll follow you back then. Nice. And then, then you have the word form dot space. Yeah. Um, on your on your uh, bio too. So if you guys want to check that out too, he's got that there too as well. Yeah. So that's a project where I've basically put in no marketing or advertising. So you know it doesn't have too much traction behind it. But um, you know, I guess my uh, mentality is if you know if it's a good product, it'll kind of cat. It'll start. You know, it'll gain users over time but hey, you know, if we'll you, see if you build it they will come right <laughs> so they so they tell me but yeah. I, I haven't seen it yet <laughs> exactly well ben from one of the many bens in bitcoin yeah. dude i appreciate you coming in and uh chatting with me dude and i'm looking forward to uh hanging out with you and getting to know you a little bit more this week hell yeah man yeah i'll All see right. you around Cool. Well, uh, thank you, everybody, for tuning in from day two at Pleb Lab. Uh, tomorrow through Friday will be a little bit more extensive, I think, because uh, I'm actually taking those days off my fiat mining job. So uh, maybe I'll be streaming a little bit more. Maybe I'll have some in the morning and then take a little lunch break and come back in the afternoon. I don't really know. It's kind of a variable right now, but I'll probably be able to tell you guys a little bit more tomorrow. So be sure to tune in and check out all the great things going on at Satsby. 
Uh, and the classic content creator thing at the end, I got to say, like and subscribe to this channel. Help it grow. Spread the good word of all the great projects that all these plebs are working on. And uh, yeah, man, we'll, we'll see you all tomorrow. Thanks for tuning in. Good, hell yeah.